As the Deputy Mayor of the Town of Edson, I call this committee a whole meeting to order. You may have a motion that the agenda for the June 11th, 2019 Committee of the Whole Meeting be adopted as presented. Uh, Councilor Gershenard yes, makes Councilor that motion. Of Town of Edson, I will move this for you, sir. All right. Now Any errors or omissions? All in favor? Passed. All right, so we'll move on to adoption of the previous minutes. Can I have a motion that the minutes of the May 14th, 2019 Committee of the Whole Meeting be adopted as presented? Councillor Bevan makes that motion. Any errors or omissions? All in favor? Passed. We have a delegation from the Edson District Community Learning Society. Welcome. Can I just get you to introduce yourself and... Yes, uh, my name's Raylene Young, and I'm from the Edson and District Community Learning Society. Welcome. So I'm here to talk to you today about settlement services, which is something that we've just started um, at the Learning Society in the Learning Center, which is located on the first floor or the main floor of the provincial building. So just a little bit about us in case um, some of you may not know. Um, we've actually been in the community for over 45 years and we gained a charity status in 2013. Um, we're just starting as a center for newcomers, but we've been doing community capacity building um, as well as being an adult learning center and doing family literacy for um, a long time. We have an open door policy for help, so um, there's usually three of us in the learning center um, and People can just come in whenever they want and get help. Um, we're usually there from around 10 to 4, Monday to Thursday. So our mission is to provide quality, lifelong learning opportunities that are responsive to community needs and interests. Um, and our vision is learning expands possibilities and strengthens communities. And these two are kind of what we're all about. And if you read them, um, it's really what we're based on. Okay, so the settlement services. This is my main point today because we just started it, so we're trying to get the word out and um, encourage people to use our services. Um, so we started this because we saw a need for it in the community. There's nobody else right now who's really doing this sort of thing. Um, and just having a place that's safe and newcomers can come get whatever help they need, we think that's a really good thing to have here. Um, and we offer help filling out forms, um, referrals, finding other services. We also do English classes and one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Um, and then we have a conversation circle where people can come and practice their English um, and just meet new people. Um, this service is for um, immigrants to Canada, um, new people to Alberta, but as well as just new people to Edson. Um, anybody who's just moving here and might be confused or need to find services um, is always welcome. Okay, so how to contact us. Um, we are located in the provincial building, as I said. Um, we have a phone number, an email address, and we are on Facebook. Um, all this information is on our brochure, which I will leave with you today. It also has my card if you have any additional questions or comments. So, in conclusion, um, we think there's a real lack of awareness um, of our services and even us in Edson. So we just want you to help us spread the word, um, get it out there that if anybody needs help, there is help available to them. Um, and we wanna create a safe space for newcomers, give them somewhere they feel welcome, somewhere they can put down roots, um, encourage them to stay in Edson. We do see a lot of people coming in who might stay here for a while, but feel they aren't connected to the community and move on to somewhere else. Um, we're really trying to get rid of that. We, if they can put down roots, um, do community capacity building, volunteer, things like that, we really find that we retain them much better and it's a help to all of us. Um, and that is it for my presentation. Um, just as a side note, we are looking for board members if anyone is interested or you know of anyone who is interested. Great, excellent. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, any questions or comments? Councillor Bayer? Uh, through the chair to uh, Miss Young. Um, have you guys talked to uh, Welcome Wagon at all? Uh, we have not. Um, we haven't connected with them. Um, just by looking at their mandate and ours, the services are quite different. Okay. Um, but it's definitely a connection opportunity for the future, I think. Okay. Um, and, and another question. Um, 
Uh, I'm on the Edson Library Board, and, okay. and sometimes uh, the, the staff has spoke, uh, have spoken about um, newcomers coming in and, and that being like kind of a safe place where they can gather information. Maybe mm -hmm. that would be a good connection point. Yeah, um, we've actually so. been working a lot with the library. Okay. Um, so we think it's a really good opportunity for us to partner with them, mm -hmm. just because a lot of our clients are their clients as well. Mm -hmm. So just getting that double exposure is a help to both of us. Okay, perfect. Councilor Schneider. Thanks for bringing your uh, presentation. Settlement services, you kind of started on it, so if I understand right, settlement is just meaning that you will help people when they newly settle into the community, is that correct? Um, in a sense, yes, but also um, we're willing to help anybody. So if you've been here for 10 years and you want to know something about Edson that you didn't know before, we're here and we're willing to help. Um, basically, we want to answer any questions that everybody has. So. If you are feeling lost in the community, even though you've lived here your whole life, um, you can come and ask us any questions you have, maybe get pointed in the direction of something you didn't know was there before. Um, we think it just opens up a lot of opportunities that might not have been there. This on the same question. So the settlement, if someone comes in and asking questions, then your office would help them. So an example, they're looking for a home or something and they showed up here then you would help them maybe not financially but you would help assist them to whatever question you'd have the answer for them and then forms numbers etc yes absolutely so we'd help with the forms um the numbers any like math questions stuff like that and anything we cannot help with we always make sure we refer them to somebody who can so we're never going to leave somebody with a sorry we can't help you please move on um, it's always sorry we can't help you but here's somebody who can Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Councilor Curry. Um, thank you. Um, just with to find out your board, how often do you guys meet? Um, and what is the role of your board? So the board meets once a month and they are a governing board. Um, so they do create mandates for our learning society. Um, and they also deal a lot with our executive director. They work very closely together. Um, on everyday um, activities with the Learning Society, but also with bigger picture stuff, of course. Um, so our board does have a large role in our program. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Wilkinson. Through the chair, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. I really enjoyed it. And you're certainly uh, meeting your mission, uh, being responsive to the community needs. I find uh, we have a lot of newcomers to Edson, and I think that's wonderful. But they do need to be made to feel comfortable, which I feel they are. And now, through Councillor Byer, did they not have a conversation group Wednesdays at the library in former years, just to practice English? That was us. They have? Yes. Okay. yes. Right, and that's and with Welcome Wagon, I used to do that, and they will take brochures to newcomers mm -hmm. uh, at no cost if it's for a nonprofit. So maybe you'd be able to reach newcomers that way a bit too. Yeah, as, absolutely. Uh, for sure, I'll suggested. look into that. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. But thank you. Really, this is wonderful that you are meeting the need that has arisen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There you go. Councillor Evan. Through the chair. Um, you put any of your brochures down at the museum and that? Yes. Because we get a lot of people coming down there just going through and uh, picking up brochures from different places in that day. Mm -hmm. And I'm also wondering about the uh, Chamber of Commerce and that. I know we have a lot of uh, people coming into town to work in that and uh, are looking for, you know, they may not speak very good English and stuff like that, but they're always looking for, you know, a place to go to find out to, to learn in that. Mm -hmm. And maybe through the chamber they can uh, put it out to the businesses saying that, you know, if you have new arrivals coming in for work experience or whatever, here's what we have to offer in our community. Yeah, we've taken our brochures to the museum as well as a lot of other places, and the chamber is on our list, so Good. we will be heading there. Great. Mm -hmm. I'll just close up saying uh, I think this is a fantastic service uh, available in our community, and um, I would just may, may recommend putting the brochures also in churches. I think uh, churches is one of the first mm -hmm. places immigrants stop in at when they come to a community, so, but Absolutely. fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Councillor? Um, what I was, uh, where you said you're a non-profit um, organization, yes. so if businesses wanted to donate to you, how would they go about doing that? So if they want to go donate to us, they can contact our office and um, we will do work through the process with them, I guess. Um, and because we are a charity, we can provide receipts um, for donations. And of course, any donations are welcome because we are completely 
um, grant funded and donation funded. So, yes. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you. Okay, we don't have any department reports. We'll move, oh, we'll move on to reports from staff, uh, community protective services. And I guess first up is Youth Council. And first off, the topic is Mayor for a Day Contest. And councilors, I'll just get you to introduce yourselves. Okay. I'm Morgan Steffler. And I'm Danielle Bittner. Um, so, uh, as a council, we went through Mayor for a Day and we made a couple of revisions, um, such as number 10 on the um, contest rules and information. We have changed it from it being grades 7 to 12 to ages 13 to 18. And I know at the last meeting at HRH on, or not the last meeting, but the one where we talked about this, uh, we talked about possibly having a deputy mayor and having a prize for second place. Um, but we've decided as a council that there will be no deputy mayor if that's okay. And um, the prize will be split between the winner and the runner up. $400 going to the winner and then 100 going to the runner up along with Edson Swag. Okay. All right, I'll open it up to uh, questions and comments. Uh, thank you ladies for your presentation and just for council's awareness, the reason why uh, number 10 was changed upon the discussion yesterday at Youth Council was uh, for it to reflect uh, the same sort of language uh, that is used for selection of the Youth Council members. It's, a, it's an age range, not a grade range. So I uh, just want to be consistent there. Councillor Curry. Did you get rid of the deputy because of the performance of the deputy mayors? <laughs> no, we were thinking that um, it'll, like, we've been thinking that it should be the mayor's special day, so he mm -hmm. or she gets to go and experience it on their own, and then I feel like the deputy, or we felt like the deputy might hinder that. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Schneider. You want me to want to be nice? <laughs> um, I'm noticing on there, like for deputy mayor, and our headline was how mayor, meaning our committee of the whole meeting. Mm -hmm. So uh, probably for the legality, they could not chair a council meeting, but it's something that they would be possibility they could chair a committee of the whole meeting, and very soon, so we would have one of the young individuals up here teaching deputy mayor how to chair. I um, think we decided that we weren't planning on letting them chair a meeting because it, we didn't want to pressure them. Because chairs who have chaired youth council meetings have said that it's a very stressful position and we didn't wish to put the pressure on the mayor for a day. It's a prize, yeah. Good answer. <laughs> uh, just further comment, we didn't want to diminish any of the responsibilities of the current youth council. Uh, uh, so we wanted to keep their their responsibilities at the same level they've always been at. Any other questions or concerns? That's through the merits. Just really a comment. Thank you, and thank you for doing the extra work on this. And we we'll look forward to having our first mayor next year. Any other comments or questions? Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. And our next presentation is on the plastic ban or plastic bag ban proposal. And councillors, can I get you to introduce yourselves? Okay, um, I'm Maggie Wolfing from the Youth Council. I'm Nicholas Bell from the Youth Council. And I am Kieran Bradbury from Youth Council as well. Welcome. Okay, so this is the plastic bag ban presented by Youth Council of Edson. And here. Okay. So, the basics of the ban. Our proposal includes the gradual elimination of plastic single-use bags over a debatable time period. This ban would include non-reusable plastic bags that are used in grocery stores and any organizations that use them. This ban would not include all single-use plastics, as some communities have chosen to do so. Suggested timeline. A few possible timelines. As discussed in a previous youth council meeting, a roughly nine-month advanced warning 
will be sent to the public and to any organizations in Edson. Any other timeline can be further debated on. A trial of six months with a public survey as a follow-up and information being presented after the six months on the effectiveness of the ban. So some plastic bag alternatives that we have are geotesian cloth bags, which are made of durable and naturally biodegradable vegetable fibers. And they're like a burlap bag, kind of. Or canvas or calico bags made from organic cotton options. Um, reusable paper bags that can be used two or three times. Or the option of boxes such as the ones found at Costco grocery stores. Okay, so what impacts the bags have on the environment. So right now, plastic bags are made from non-renewable resources. So we have different chemicals getting added into these bags and they're just entering the atmosphere after they don't manage to get into the bag. And these chemicals include methane and ethylene, which destroy soils and are impossible for plants to grow on top of them. Um, the plastic bags are also contaminating waterways. Wind picks them up, they float into the rivers, sinks in the lakes, oceans and they're impacting the aquatic life such as sea turtles. They're also impacting local animals such as squirrels and stuff too. They're getting caught in them as well and they can't get out. So uh, every day plastic bags can take anywhere between 10 to a, a, to a thousand years, I almost said 10,000 uh, years to biodegrade if they are not ingested by wildlife first. Production uses large amounts of oil to operate them. So, the majority of plastic bags are made from a few structural chains of the molecule polyethylene. Polyethylene is a chemical made from refined oil or cracked natural gas. The oil or gas is superheated and pressurized to isolate the pure polyethylene chains that combine to form pure plastic. High temperatures will melt the plastic, which will then be pushed into a bubble by the outside air and onto a cooling process. After the cooled plastics, the bag will be cut into desirable shapes and sizes and it's not a very environmentally friendly plastic bag. So the footsteps that we would be following, one would be White Court, who had to start off the ban. They had people outside of grocery stores handing out um, information pamphlets to bring out information to the public, which would be a really good idea for Edson, I think. Um, while 4.8% of the population disagreed with the reduction and eventual ban of plastic bags, 87.4% agreed with, with it, well, 7.8 were undecided in white course after the ban took place. On top of that, entire states and hugely populated cities have managed to implement plastic bag bans. California had their ban in place in August of 2014, and New York has set a concrete date of March 2020 for their ban to take effect. So some costs of converting, economically speaking, um, there would be possible job losses due to consumers not shopping at grocers who do not supply a convenient way of shopping and transporting their groceries. A study shown by the NCPA displays that there was a 10% decrease in employment. Um, and recycling machinery repairs would also be a cost. Um, repairs would need to be done in the event that plastic bags get trapped in plastic removing machinery. These costs have reached up to about $1 million for the city of San Jose. And another cost talking ecologically. Um, paper bags require large amounts of fuel, water, and trees to produce. They are not usually made with recyclable material because of the newer paper having stronger fibers. Um, cloth bags are typically made from cotton and the production of the cotton requires a lot of fertilizer and a lot of water. The pesticides and fertilizer contain um, nitrates and phosphates which can be which can enter waterways from runoff and it causes eutrophication, which is the aging of lakes that causes um, algae blooms, shallow water, higher temperatures, and would eventually lead to those lakes drying up. And there are sources. So any questions? Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Curry. Um, fantastic presentation. Very informative, you guys. Um, my comment, just knowing I sit on the chamber, Edson Chamber Court, and the chamber is looking at creating a subcommittee to start looking at this um, from a business aspect too because they are the ones that are the affected on whether they're ordering and what are they doing so is youth council willing to work with or sit on that board um, that subcommittee to work with them to work with the business group to work on this ban 
Um, I can't speak for all of the youth counselors, but I know a few of us would be willing to work further with this because I know a few of us are really passionate about this, so I know we'd be willing. Perfect. Good to hear. Thank you. Councilor Schneider. You guys make it hard for me to ask questions. You have a lot of details. I'm one of the 8% that disagrees with the ban, and the reason is for that. I totally agree that it caused an environmental thing, but if we looked at the impact, if you would put a price tag on the bag, so the individuals that don't want to be agreed with the ban, so right now you pay, I think, five cents at Walmart for a bag. If you put a deposit price on the bag, because I bought the recycled bags and I've got a closet full of them because I forget to bring them back. But your information is very good, very truthful. But have we considered um, the bags themselves? If you put a deposit, same as a plastic bottle, uh, there would be a deposit. They could be burnt because right now we're burning coal or we're burning natural gas. So if you take the same bag, it's hard to recycle because of what it's made out of, but you could burn them in the incinerators to generate power, which we're, we're doing now. And with the paper bags, yes, I agree, the fertilizer and stuff, but paper we used to use, and I'm old enough to remember when, we need to have plastic because we're gonna, we're gonna end up using all the trees making paper bags. So that's just my comment with your percentages, but good work, you have a lot of details, you have a very strong argument. I like the idea of you saying you're gonna do it over time, like you just don't want all of a sudden tomorrow, but that's the one thing I would consider for the band by raising a price. So if I show up at the store, I want a plastic bag, you charge me a dollar for the bag. You know, that would help on the idea. But other than that, great work. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, Councillor Barron? Uh, through the chair to um, the youth councillors, um, thank you for the presentation. And I really appreciated having the um, alternatives to using plastic bags because, um, like Councillor Chenard said, uh, some people forget their um, they're reusable bags, but there are other options, and, and of course, sometimes we have to be forced into change before we really remember them uh, all the time. Um, as well as, I, I really like the idea of the follow-up uh, six months after the ban is implemented. That way, you can kind of gauge the public uh, feedback, because sometimes before big changes, people don't like it, and then after the change, sometimes maybe their opinion changed quicker than they thought it would, so it's a good information. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Wilkinson. I have a question to you, actually. Uh, the Regional Waste Management Society, are they putting any pressure on this? About five years ago, they really wanted to ban bags from Edinburgh to Jasper. Yep. Is there any talk of that? There is definitely a talk of it. There's um, varying opinions on depending on the community. So we are definitely talking about it, but it's not, it's not at the stage of a proposal right now. So. If I could just, yes, just say ahead. thank you for your presentation, and I think with the federal government just making up some mandatory things, this day is going to come. As I say in Fort McMurray, if they can go shopping with their bags, and people all do, there's no reason we can't be doing that. But it's a lot more than just the plastic bags as well, so we need producers to stop making so much garbage. Mayor? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, to Councillor Wilkinson's point, uh, I, I really agree that if you do something like this, it's really beneficial to have it from a regional perspective. Um, certainly there's been discussion at, at the regional waste management uh, level. Uh, Jasper actually just uh, voted to do a ban in Jasper. Uh, with They have had a lot of debate about that and not everybody's on board with it, but they're, they're moving forward with that. Um, and I think that uh, the federal government announcement is certainly positive, but of course we're going to have a change in, likely have a change in government uh, in the fall, maybe, maybe not. Um, and there's a lot we could do in the interim. Um, you know, I, I don't think that should stop us from, from making progress on this. This is a serious issue and I really uh, appreciate Youth Council. This was something they actually brought up in their discussions. It was not something that we brought up. Um, and the work and the passion about this is uh, is awesome. And um, we did have the Recycling Society at Youth Council yesterday, and and there's positives and negatives to the bans. Uh, I think everybody around this table knows the real solution here is EPR and uh, effective producer responsibility. Um, so hopefully we see some movement on that. But uh, looking forward to uh, further discussions with Youth Council on this and the uh, presentation the Recycling Society is doing next week. Uh, at the museum and uh, just want to once again thank Youth Council for uh, for bringing this up and uh, for everybody here who made presentations today 
Um, maybe we can also get the youth counselors that are in the back that didn't present to uh, introduce themselves. That's a good idea. Yeah. Counselors, uh, can you introduce yourself if you haven't already done so? <laughs> I'm Ella Krebs. I'm Mika George. I'm Marie Quantis. Thanks for coming, guys. Welcome, yeah. All right, any other questions or comments? Uh, great job, guys. I think uh, for our first, first youth council, you guys set the bar pretty high with this proposal. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think Councillor Curry's suggestion of working with the chamber is perfect. Uh, and, it, and it also allowed, even if you don't stay on youth council, you could probably continue to work with them on this issue uh, uh, for the next year. So, excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, everyone is welcome to stay, or you're free to go as well. <laughs> Next up, we have executive office milestones and achievements. What do you mean? Bye. Thanks for coming, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming. Daniel, you're missing. You're not going to stay. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll allow okay. Kayla to speak to the report as she originated it. So. Okay, excellent. Uh, it, I don't really have much to add outside of the report. Basically, we've just received requests for um, different types of recognition for significant milestones, 90th birthdays, 50th wedding anniversaries. Um, I never really had a specific guideline as to how to deal with them, so they've kind of been dealt with differently over the years. Um, so just having something concrete in place to follow um, would be good. Councillor Schneider? Um, I'm actually pleased we're bringing this forward, and you're 100% right. In the past, we've had just automatically recognized, but there was loopholes because we did some and not others, like an example, grand, grand opening milestones. In 2011, when we celebrated the town's 100th, we did recognition. So I believe this is good. And in that way, there is a guideline because I'm all for it. I agree it doesn't have to be expensive, but I do believe that it's from the town recognizing the fact of what you have in the report is very positive. Councillor Wilkinson? Through the chair, I really like that we have this very much so, particularly for the grand opening of the local business. If we can get some consistent gift, I did once suggest a picture of the business framed and give it to them and they can put it on their wall. But the wedding anniversary, it's 30 years and every 10 years after, 50 maybe to me, like yes. a lot of people celebrate 30. It's just, this is gonna be work for somebody, for sure. And then I'd have a chance for okay. <laughs> <laughs> Third time, Mark. With the 30? I'm 21. <laughs> Any other, Mayor? Uh, first of all, thank you, Kayla, for uh, putting to this together. There's, we've had a lot of discussion about what should be given, when it should be given, how it should be given. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to see this. Um, I don't think we get a lot of 30th anniversaries, but um, more so on the 50th, uh, 50th side. But I think this uh, really allows us to uh, have a, kind of a set policy in place and, and makes it a little bit more consistent uh, moving forward. And uh, I know with, uh, with birthdays and stuff, uh, our, 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 our new intern uh, designed a, uh, some certificates and uh, oh, oh, uh, nice. it looks fantastic mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so great work mm -hmm. Councillor Bannon. Hey, Chair. <coughs> hey, Kayla. Yeah I think this is great we have this and now I've been to several openings where the town has not given anything at all mm -hmm. and uh, the county has always given them something even if it was a plaque or a picture or whatever and that and even when we had to open the reps all placed down at the bottom there Everybody gives something except for the town, and even one of our local artists, Sonia, did a really nice picture up and uh, gave a presentation to them and stuff like that. And uh, Hudson didn't do anything. And even with warehouses, 35th, we've done nothing. The library, 75th, we've done nothing. The county gave it. So I think we've always asked, and the previous council we asked too, so I think it's a well, long overdue. We have to start you know, showing our businesses in the round that we care. We're open for business. We'd like them to come in, and we do support them in that to go forward from this and that. So I think it's great. Looking forward to see what the Michael over there has or whatever in that for sure. 
I have a question. There may be times when we know that something is coming up. We don't need to wait for a request from the public. Can we can we initiate this process? Like for instance, for Weyerhaeuser, or mm -hmm. they might not want to toot their own horn. Maybe we need to initiate it. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, um, Council, of course, can initiate those types of, of um, uh, motions and, and actions as they as they choose. The only caution on that would be trying to express why you didn't remember or choose to express that for uh, one that did not identify itself, right. um, and then that there's some potential there that you right. may have to reconsider. Right. So. Councilor Schneider? Um, I would actually totally, I would probably partially agree with your comment on the same token if we advertise the fact that, you know, when a uh, new business, so I mean, when we get development permits, so granted you're 100% right we may skip an anniversary of let's say 50 years in business or something. And I mean, a lot of times if we go 50 years, that's a big milestone, 50 and 100. But on a lot of times, if they should not come back on us and say, hey, you forgot me, because on the same token, if they were expecting one, they could maybe announce that they're having a 50th. So I think if we put the bar at 50 and up for anniversaries of any way, shape, or form, and then birthdays, like we've had individuals in our town turning 100 is a huge milestone. Um, and we have some of that paperwork, if we go back to, uh, I'm going back to the 100th anniversary, we had put out a whole bunch of advertisements of uh, people, their birthdays matching the towns, um, if they were a 100, 100 year old business. So if we set a bar of 50 starting, then a lot of times through our own town staff and stuff, we've looked at business licenses. We may miss some, but like mentioned, like Warehouser 35th anniversary was like, oh my God, how did we miss that? They've been paying taxes to us for 35 years. So ones like that, we shouldn't miss. But a smaller mom and pop operation, nothing against them. They make our town grow. We may not know how many years these people have been in business for, but if we can hit the big ones and put the bar advertised, the onus has got to be on them. Councillor Bear. Uh, through the chair to administration, um, I'm comfortable with the uh, the dates or the the years that you've chosen um, for the businesses and birthdays and anniversaries and grand openings. Um, my my comment is uh, with the you know the discussion around the table um, when we're invited to um, a location as a council person, then I feel whether or not they have submitted a um, a form, I, I would take that. Um, invitation as a submission that we are attending their whatever that event is for them and then maybe be able to have an item um, at that time whether it's a plaque or a card or um, or a gift of some sort depending on what the, the level of um, what the uh, what the reason for in attendance is in relation to this does that make sense uh, administration through the chair um, to consider buyer and a little bit, Councillor Schnard. So um, when we we have received a few requests for the mayor to attend a ground opening or the deputy mayor in, in his place, uh, the mayor can't attend. And in that case, we would do uh, like a gift, like we usually send the mayor right now with a bouquet of, a nice bouquet of flowers and a congratu little congratulations card. So I think we could qualify that as a, kind of as a notice we're having this grand opening. Okay. Um, but otherwise, like, yeah, I don't think our intention would ever be to comb through the business mm -hmm. licenses mm -hmm. and give send gifts. No, it has to be, they have to contact us and request, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that the mayor attend their mm -hmm. ribbon cutting ceremony. It has, they have to give a little bit. Councilor <laughs> Wilkinson. To the chair, I just think this really could be a collaborative effort. Like, we as councillors are out there representing the community. If we hear things, just text Kayla and say, such and such is coming up. If we know it's a fact. Councillor Curry. Um, I I kind of disagree. Um, I think I think our responsibility is not necessarily to text Kayla, um, but to let the business know that we have this and that they themselves can do it. Um, I think that we have a lot of businesses. We have a lot of birthdays. We have a lot of anniversaries. Um, and if I, I think if it's important to the business owner, not every business owner, not every birthday anniversary um, wants our recognition they not everyone thinks that's a priority or an importance um, and I think for ones that do so I think if yes we know that there is a 35 you know business thing you can say to someone in that business hey 
have you, you know, did you, are you doing your application or somebody in your business doing the application to get a plaque? You know, we like to recognize and then it's on them. Um, just because I do think it is about, we um, were then setting that precedence that, and A, because you're a big business, you're more important than a mom and pop shop and I don't agree with that. Um, so I just think that, I, I think the onus is that you need to do the application. Any other comments or questions? Uh, yeah, just further to that point, um, you know, sometimes we get soft <laughs> invites, so you get, you get your hard invite, come do scissor cutting or do a presentation, we want you to be there sometimes, it's, just let you know this is going on this day, um, I, and I think if somebody, if, if um, for example, the library 75th anniversary is coming up, it's more of a soft invite for everybody, as the library rep, for example, you can go to Kayla and say, hey, we're going to be there, we would like to ensure we have a presentation um, so I think you know I think there's some common sense that plays into the policy as well um, or you know you may know that they're having all of a sudden you find out there's a barbecue next week celebrating 50 years of such right. and such business been, yeah. and you're and you're planning on going there mm -hmm. uh, I think that you know um, I think there's no, no nothing no harm with the counselor saying hey can we get a card and a bouquet of flowers because I'm planning on attending and Mm -hmm. On behalf of council, I want to present this. If the mayor or the deputy mayor is not going to be there, then the council mm -hmm. members can do that. So, it's kind of my thought. Just Councilor Wilkins, back to my thought. We don't have like a thousand businesses in Canton, so I think the ones we have, we need to treat nicely and well. Especially Main Street. I just walked down there, and there's a lot of empty places down there. So, I don't think a little extra plaque or a little extra recognition is going to hurt. Administration, Mr. Chairman, I would just note that if if, the, if if there's a program that would take um, more than regular uh, effort by staff, such as combing through businesses and and reviewing that on a regular period to ensure we're providing the uh, level of service anticipated by council, that does have a cost. The the time of public servants does factor into what service we are be, being able to provide. So. Um, uh, on discussion if, if that's how ch council chooses to go at, at that higher level of, of initiation for this then um, it should be by resolution and then we right. can accommodate so. right. yeah I don't I don't agree with anything like going through records and and looking up stuff but I think as things come up you know use some common sense and if, if there's an opportunity if it's a milestone then for sure uh, council members can certainly request that Facebook's pretty good research. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Bevan? Yeah, I think, you know, if you uh, check with the Chamber, too, because they have their awards night and that for businesses and everything else like that, they usually have a pretty good history on what businesses have been in the town a long time or what their uh, milestone is they're coming up to in that, eh? Uh, they have a, where they go way back in time on a lot of this history on that. So you'd probably check with them when they have something coming up for their business awards. You could maybe give some to them then or whatever or go down or whatever that but uh, I think they'd be a valuable uh, asset you know to check it out now. Councillor mm -hmm. Schneider? Um, I would agree not extra time but when we're doing the business renewals at that time I believe a lot of times we would have the information right in front of us so I would be <coughs> the comment we're not spending a lot of extra time but during the renewal time you know there's I'm not sure how, uh, do we have any idea how many business licenses are issued in, in Edison roughly? Mr. Chairman, if, if it's, uh, if it pleases council, uh, Al Shram is here uh, and his department does manage the business licenses. Uh, yes. Perhaps he can provide some clarity on if we track the age or renewals mm -hmm. that have been provided or, or the number. <laughs> Sorry, Al, we're on the You're spot. on the spot at 450. <laughs> Not for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> but you dress nicely. We need to yeah. see you. Uh, through the chair. Um, did, and again, I'll count on my partner here a little bit as well. The, the, the administrative workload on the business license is basically they send out the renewals uh, as far as tracking history. That's not part of the process, whether that can be done or not. Um, we can explore that, obviously, but it's not part of the current renewal process right now. We're more focused on making sure that administratively we get that information out to our businesses capturing new businesses, any businesses that are no longer there, those are some of the more bigger demands that we're facing right now versus tracking uh, how long they've been in business. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Not to say we can't explore more options, but I think there will be a definitely a little bit more workflow to do that. 
uh, through the chair to administration. So uh, um, through the discussion, my, um, I, I'm, I'm still kind of firm on my comments earlier. I, I think that if we're invited to it, then we can give a, uh, an award or a plaque or whatever is reasonable. Um, I'll admit to myself personally, if someone gives me a plaque and I don't want it, it's going in the garbage. So if I don't invite myself out for that gift, then I, I, I don't want it. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that everybody is different around the table about that and, and the businesses that want something maybe are a little more vocal or have a grand opening sale or whatever and then they invite council to that sale and then at that point we provide a respectable gift for the, whatever the occasion is. So, thanks. Administration, do you have enough to move forward? Um. I, I think so. <laughs> I, I feel at this point I would basic with the adjustment of the wedding basically move forward as it is. Um, it, I really do think the onus is on the business community or uh, the council to make that business aware that this is out there and if they want it because I really agree with what Councillor Byer said that some people just don't want it and it just goes in the back corner and collects dust or in the garbage and it's just it's more of, I guess, an annoyance than it would be a positive for some people. Um, and I don't, we don't want to make that, we don't want to create that, we don't want to make that out of this, but for some people it is important, and then if they were aware of this, they would reach out and ask for it. Councilor mm -hmm. Curry? Um, would it be easy then to just kind of um, hmm. cover what everyone is saying here um, in submitting a request? Would there be a way to just add an extra, like 1.4? Um, with something related to council being able to bring forward like just because right now the way this is like if we pass it that, like that that soft soft stuff isn't covered um, so if that's important to people um, then is there a way that we could put requests can be submitted through count by council or something along that just an extra one under the submitting a request mr. chairman if I, if I can answer uh, it's your policy, um, so if you add it to the policy, we can, uh, or or you want to see something like that coming forward, um, as as council, we can definitely fabricate something that would accommodate that type of process where council can initiate mm -hmm. a submission on their own merit. So, Do, or on does their own anyone suggestion. have an issue with adding of that clause? No, it makes too much sense. All right, please proceed. I would just say it has to be a milestone, just not. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I think everything else still applies. Yeah. yeah. You have enough? Excellent. Thank you very much. Move on to Regional Economic Development Alliance. Rita, update. Good evening, Deputy Mayor, Welcome. Rest of the Council. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> No, of course not. Give me just a second here. Okay. Um, so administration did send a letter to Community Futures West Yellowhead um, asking the role of the organization, their mandate, and whether they would be able to fulfill the role of a regional economic development alliance. Uh, Community Future is West Yellowhead did reply saying that that was not in their mandate or budget for the current year and that we could bring it forward um, at the next organizational meeting in December. So that's where we stand right now. Nancy Robbins, the general manager of Community Futures West Yellowhead, has graced us with her presence this evening and has um, prepared a short presentation. Excellent. Thank Without you. Without further ado, I'll hand it over. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, yes. So I, the letter is included in the package, and I just wanted to make sure that uh, we could go over the details, and I would like to answer any questions that you may have and discuss the issue further. Um, so as you know, Community Futures West Shallowhead serves the West Shallowhead region. We are a nonprofit corporation under Section 9 of the Business Companies Act. Um, we are owned uh, by the five municipalities in which we serve. So it's the town of Edson owns 20% of Community Futures West Shallowhead. And um, each year at your organizational meeting, you appoint two directors or two counselors to sit on our board and so currently Councillor Curry and Councillor Bevan are sitting on the board of directors. 
Um, usually we do not ask for financing from our member municipalities. We do, however, on occasion may come to you and talk to you about a special project we may be doing or about something that needs funding. But we do not um, count on operational funds. We consider the appointment of two counselors a very big contribution to our organization. So. Uh, just to talk a little bit about our strategic plan, um, our strategic plan is for a four-year period and we do review it once a year and usually in early December we have a retreat, we go over it, we measure on whether it's still relevant. These goals really align with what is happening in the economic uh, situation in the West Shallowhead region and our board works to identify areas where we see a lot of tremendous growth. Uh, so we have uh, tourism entrepreneurship, agricultural and forestry production, uh, youth entrepreneurship, and alternative energy initiatives and new technologies as priorities where we like to focus in the region. Uh, so we have done work in all these areas. Um, as you may be aware, we have uh, support Albert Open Farm Days every year. We're heading into our third year for that project. Uh, also, we have a Yellowhead Food Initiative. We work on the county with that project. Uh, youth entrepreneurship is quite big this year. We are doing Lemonade Day in Jasper and Hinton, which is June 22nd, and we're hoping to bring that to Edson next year. And also, we've done a lot of energy work in the Hinton area uh, in the past uh, fiscal year because of the geothermal movement and the work towards geothermal in that region. So in the next year, we're really hoping to do a lot of work on tourism entrepreneurship, and I'll be working with your administration on that project and how that will look, because uh, we're hoping to look at businesses outside the National Park and how they are working to support tourism in the area. Core services is really what we're all about. We do business coaching, business training, business financing, and community economic development. Our vision is to grow communities one idea at a time and the mission statement as designed by the board is strengthening and diversifying our regional economy by supporting entrepreneurs through financing and programming. And that's really is what we're all about. We give people loans, we coach them through the business process, we hope that they're successful and do everything in our power to make sure they're successful, and also work with them to find different ways that they can continue to maintain their business. And while we do that, uh, we do community economic development. So we do a number of projects in the region that really help to grow the economy and to work on what we really need to get done to make the West Yellowhead successful. And of course, we're funded by the Government of Canada. They have recognized some priorities which they wish us to address, and they are in two main uh, areas right now. Uh, the first one being inclusiveness. We are asked to work more with Indigenous peoples, uh, women, people with disabilities, and youth, and cluster development in the area of clean technology, clean resources, digital technology, advanced manufacturing, value-added agriculture, and health and biosciences. So we try to... Um, make sure that uh, we're looking at ways that we're inclusive in all the work that we do. We try to include as many people and be as diverse as possible. And also we try to support as many businesses as we can in the West Yellowhead that are doing things that are outside the norm. Um, and that's where we work in cluster development. So that is my pitch. <laughs> I'm really here to answer your questions. I do know that there's been many conversations about Arita. And I, I think it's very important to realize that our role at Community Futures West Shallowhead is we just support the work that everybody does in economic development. Um, and even though the role of Arita is not necessarily our role, it's not a role, it's a role that we would definitely support and we would want to help the town of Hudson if that's what they desire as much as possible. So excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for making the trip out and uh, your presentation. I think Community Futures does a lot of great work uh, within the community, especially supporting small business and, and getting a lot of businesses started. Um, I wasn't here when we had the discussion about the RITA, um, unfortunately, but uh, you know I think the vision of the RITA is more higher level strategic um, goals. Um, and it, it was, uh, the idea behind the RITA too is to include municipalities that are not involved in most Yellowhead community futures, mm -hmm. uh, to form partnerships with uh, communities such as Whitecourt and Drayton Valley, which uh, have very similar industries as us, as well as Hinton. Um, so uh, Whitecourt currently is not in Arita, we're not in Arita, uh, Drayton isn't. Um, so that's where uh, the whole discussion came uh, from the Regional Mayor's Group on, on how we can work together um, to um, support one another. Um, that doesn't mean that uh, Community Futures can't be involved or shouldn't be involved. I think they have a really important role in that. Um, but it's really to, to work on some higher level strategy and, and thoughts uh, 
around attracting business to our region and tourism into our region. Uh, we have a number of similar industries and we are working on a number of uh, similar type projects, whether it's bike parks and that sort of thing, so how we can coordinate and, and uh, support one another uh, moving forward. And uh, there might be some opportunities through, uh, uh, through the provincial government to get funding if we uh, want to get Arita started because we are currently the only region in the province without Arita. So, um, so uh, and it's something that I know the town of Whiteport is really interested in pursuing. Councillor Schneider. Thank you for coming, Nancy. It's always an enjoyable trip driving to Edson. My <laughs> it is. It is. It's it it nice scenery. Um, I understand the importance of Rita, but this will be through administration. We're getting involved. Do we know what the cost would be if you know for involving you or we have a rep? So does anyone know what would cost us to join Rita? And since everyone except everyone in the province except this area doesn't have it, so what would the cost be? See the value, but at what cost? I don't have that information, Martino. Behind the suits, under pressure. Yes, if I may, Mr. Chair. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, um, basically, what we need is direction from council to pursue this with our regional partners, okay. and that would be the work that would be undertaken to see if we can pursue grants um, to to form a RITA, whether that be for staffing or for studies or for, for that sort of thing. One of the key things is that if we do a study or we do some work on that, we don't want it sitting on the shelf. We want to be no, able exactly. to implement it. We don't want the same. We, we've been through this process before. We want to take a, a fresh approach and ensure that whatever we do is is actually providing results to the, to right, the yeah. municipalities. And we would obviously be willing to work with Community Futures on that. Councilor Curry. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming and just clarifying and the way that the roles could work together. Um, my main reason um, for bringing it up and that is just to make sure that we're reusing our resources efficiently um, and not underutilizing or overutilizing and fully aware of what we have available. Um, so thank you for the clarification. Thank you. Councilor Wilkinson. Through the chair. Uh, first off, Nancy, I'd like to thank you for coming out today, but I'd also like to thank you for all the work you've done in surveying our businesses at least twice to find out uh, data for us. We really <laughs> appreciate it. And do you go and seek people to start tourism businesses or they come to you? We do not actively go out and find people to start businesses. Um, we wait for them to come with us for an idea. I, I think it's an important piece of what we need to do over the next six to eight months with regards to tourism is to actually find out uh, what businesses we have working in that sector because I don't think we're really clear outside the National Park what people are actually doing in the tourism sector and where the gaps are. We know in our region where all the assets are. We know we've had that very well mapped through the Alberta Northern Rockies Tourism Alliance work, so we have that work. So what we would like to do is build on that and find out which assets are actually being used by businesses and what needs to be done. And if once we establish that and find out who's working um, and working in the tourism industry, especially like in this area, um, then we can start looking at what the gaps are and, then, and, and figuring out what needs to, we need businesses we need to help create and what we need to do to make the most out of those assets. Well, so I think that needs to me a train mm -hmm. up to Cadman, just like the train in Stantler. And yeah. You could find somebody. Well, obviously, they're an indigenous woman with a disability with a youth partner. That can also drive. That can also drive trains in a male-dominated profession. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. That's yeah. That's yeah. That's that's right. That's right. That's right. That is run by Solar Power. So, that would just yeah. be such an asset to the town with all the tourists coming to it. But and seriously, it. we we seriously we need to know first what people are actually doing so that mm. we can promote those businesses right, first, yeah. and that's the first step and once we find out what we don't have then we need to to make sure it happens so. and I trust you'll do all that because you have oh, thank, thank you, you so much. thank you I'm Martino and mr. chairman members of council just as a as a note as well if we did proceed with looking at Arita my understanding from from Nancy and our previous conversations our our roles would not necessarily overlap we would complement the, yeah. the goal would be to complement yeah. each other and do things that they as community futures are not necessarily within a mandate to do so most readers if we look at some of the successful ones such as jedi around i believe it is uh Wetaskiwin and, and, and camrose you know they 
perform less of the, the, the business support piece that's done by Community Futures, mm -hmm. and they do more of tourism marketing, reviewing municipal bylaws to determine if there's uh, alignments or, or, or work that can be done to make sure that you can attract more business. They actually do look at, at bringing in different key businesses or, or marketing the region. They perform, in many ways, a very different function. Um, uh, so that's just okay. a note that mm -hmm. it is a different investment, um, and but yeah. Okay, thank you, Councilor Bailey. Uh, through the chair to uh, Nancy and Carrie, uh, thank you for the presentation and the clarity on uh, on the Vidas and the mm -hmm. community futures and, and and where we stand. Um, so how are we? How are how is community futures doing on the current priorities that you have on the board? Really well, actually. Um, we have a very active Entrepreneurs with Disabilities program. Mm -hmm. um, we have a youth program. We do a lot of um, education with kids. So like yesterday, for example, I was at the high school here in, H in Hinton, or in Edson, sorry. Um, I get all the high school names mixed up. Parkland. No. Parkland, Parkland thank mm -hmm. you. Um, and we went over Adulting 101. It was a learn a how to money course, and we talked about um, budgeting. And for example, so I did um, talked about how to open a bank account and how to save your money and what it meant to file your taxes, which was actually horrifying for teenagers. <laughs> and uh, then we did a budget exercise where I gave them scenarios. I gave them a job, I gave them education levels, and then I gave them their family structure, and then they had to figure out a monthly budget based on that. And then once they figured out the monthly budget, I was really kind and then gave them a problem that they had to solve. So it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed myself. Um, it was in the comm class and we're hoping to do more of that in the fall. We have a great program called Head Start which is very curriculum based that we hope to bring into the schools in the region. And um, you know so it's the, the youth programming is fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, women, we had a very successful women's uh, conference um, uh, last year and we're hoping to bring a uh, women's entrepreneurship program to the region but that's in the works and indigenous relationships are always hard and so we're just constantly working on them and usually that's where we work with clients one-on-one -on -one in that area uh, the cluster development's a little bit harder so um, we we try to look at that in in supporting um, individual businesses so for example if we have a business that's really into digital technology we try to refer them and get them as many resources as possible because they need a lot of help because there's not a lot of people that are doing that. Mm -hmm. So we try to bring in and get them as much as help as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and some of it's easy. The value added agriculture is very easy in the county when we have so many people producing products. So yeah, these are a lot easier um, priorities. The previous government, they were a lot more challenging. We had things like federal defense procurement and things that were difficult <laughs> to even consider. So these, these priorities are a lot, work a lot better with the West Yellowhead region. Mm -hmm. Councilor Bevan. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, I've been on this board for a while. I really appreciate the work that all our municipalities do and yourself and Tim and that. And I know you said you don't go out and try to find businesses to, to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, they come to you. Uh, we have Tim that's down here at the chamber and that he's always there one day a week I believe mm -hmm. and if you know of any businesses that uh, want to start up and they can't really oh. you know get a funding or whatever go down and see Tim he'll bring you in he'll do the coaching he'll get the money for you he'll pass oh. off to Nancy uh, mm -hmm. he has done a lot like that and uh, they do everything in that and there's a lot of businesses in all our communities that have you know started up and some have gone under like they do with the banks anyway and that, but most of it them happens. are thriving in that and mm -hmm. they're looking to either add mm -hmm. or grow or whatever in that. So mm -hmm. Community Futures does everything like that and it's a very good organization to Thank you. go to. Thank you. Sure. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me know when you need me. All, right. All, All the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up uh, for corporate services, we have uh, information or update on the landfill condition. I'm going to declare a contract. Okay. Sorry, what? It's just the here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Nancy. All right. Who's Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Bruce was unable to attend today, so I'll be providing the report. Um, on behalf of the uh, Environmental and Fleet Services. Uh, 
we wanted to update council since it's been a little while with regards to the landfill recovery operation. Uh, we've been looking at the, the site. We've had new monitors in place and sent those results off to our fire specialist. Uh, the good news is, is that uh, their uh, assessment of that was initially very favorable. I, in fact, just got a draft of the report that states that they would consider the fire to be extinguished based on the evidence we have. So we've been successful in addressing this rather aggressively and now ending it promptly. Um, however, uh, we do feel it's responsible that we continue monitoring just to confirm that information and, and stay ready. But otherwise, it looks like our approach has, has uh, addressed the issue. Um, and that does open up some additional opportunities for us in looking at our new cell development as well to reestablish uh, service. So in looking at the new cell, uh, there was complications with going with our previous plan and expanding to the south due to changes within the uh, uh, wetlands policy. Uh, so the suggestion that we've fronted and we've been uh, meeting with some success with the Alberta environment was to look at a vertical expansion uh, north of the site uh, within our current footprint and within our current remediation plan and, and well system uh, for groundwater. Uh, we've gotten favorable test results from the geotech on that. Um, so we will be consulting with the Alberta environment here in July uh, and hopefully seeing that proceed uh, more quickly than slowly. That said, uh, we are hoping to bring you an update following confirmation on, on the fire and seeing that those numbers are staying solid or, or getting lower again on the carbon monoxide, um, getting some progress or an indication of timeline from Alberta environment. And so you'll probably expect to see a, a good update coming either end of July or in August. Um, with that, uh, the only other thing we will say is outside of uh, standard operating procedure is that uh, we are still operating the transfer site. Um, it does require more staff time to manage the bins. Um, and we do have issues, our own set of issues that we're dealing with there. However, it's been relatively successful. Uh, and whenever we have this kind of um, push forward and we have several months of data, we can also update you on, any, if, on if there's any additional costs or losses of um, uh, funds that we would typically receive profits uh, from taking in uh, more waste uh, from that operation so we can get an idea kind of mid-year about what the impact of this event was and, and how we see it going forward. Um, so with that, do you, does, are there any questions? To the chair, I think it's a rhetoric question, but there will be no town cleanup this year. Then it's cancelled almost indefinitely. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman, um, uh, it's a it's a program that we've usually done within our current level of service. Uh, if council would like us to, we can uh, proceed with that. However, there is an additional cost for transferring it to Hinton, um, and so uh, I'm not concerned about the use of our staff resources, as that's typically something we've undertaken. Uh, it is the issue of, of tipping and transportation. Oh, yeah. So if council would like us to do that, we are able to bring that forward for consideration of a resolution and we can action that upon an appropriate time frame. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Can I just uh, summarize what I think I heard you say? We're, gonna, we're looking at options now to, to, to build higher vertical space rather than grow cell, new cells. Is that correct? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, uh, that's correct. If you look at our current site on our, on our webpage, you'll find uh, mm -hmm. air photos on our mapping. North of the current working cell uh, is an older area that's within our license. And so what we're looking at doing is either building up on that cell that was previously approved and just having a, a clear earthen barrier mm -hmm. between that older mm -hmm. landfill and the new dry class three landfill. Um, if our results of the fire extinguishment come back quite favorably and start to hold in that pattern, uh, we might also slightly modify our approach and then instead look at actually just building right off of our existing landfill cell straight over because that does gain us quite a bit of efficiency. Um, but that of course is up to the regulator to decide whether our plan can be approved in that way. <coughs> Councilor Rivera. Chair, Chair. Martin. How much land do we have out there in total? And what would, when will we run out of land if we keep going? Mr. Chairman, through the Councilor Bevan. 
that's <coughs> that's a, a bit more of a complicated question than it should be. We actually have, I think, um, close to a half section or at least, yeah, close to a half section in that area. Un unfortunately, though, not all of it has the appropriate yeah. work. Uh, it's not necessarily all useful to us for a, for a landfill. So if we look at the area to the east, uh, it's, it's actually under agricultural production right now as a, as a holding use. Um, it's not as favorable for use as our current site. Um, so there's lots of efficiencies with trying to expand in our current area, uh, which is also standard standard best management practices within the landfill to move in certain areas rather than spreading it out too far. Um, to the west, though, is there's some oil and gas interests. Uh, again, we're running into both to the west and south of the current cell, which we do own, um, wetlands issues, because in 2015, the wetlands policy included the green zone, which is us. And so Muskeg is considered a wetland, just like any other open pond. It just has a different um, assessment by the government. So it's not that we can't, uh, it's that it will take quite a while. That was one of our, one of our approaches to moving back into our, our existing footprint. Uh, was because um, wetlands assessment can only be done during a certain period of the year, and then they, which can delay you till you get that study done, and then they can take several months, more than a year in some cases, to get back from the province, which would then allow us to proceed with the applications, uh, and 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 uh, establishing level of service was tried was our yeah. was our primary approach. So, any other comments or questions? Okay, thank you very much for that update. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, no items of sundry. Uh, any questions from the media and public regarding okay. items from this committee of the whole meeting? I actually have a question about mayor for a day. I'm not sure if you can answer it or if it's answer it. Please proceed, yeah. But I'm just wondering um, what the job will entail as mayor for a day, like if it's sitting on committee or... If it's like looking at implementing their proposed initiative. That's right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll take a stab at this. Uh, when they are submitting their application for Mayor of the Day, they come up with a big idea that they would like to do, and there's a, they put it together a little budget for it. And uh, it may not all be done within one day, but they'll probably initiate it that day. And then they'll also go with the mayor to various events and ribbon cutting or... Uh, any events that the mayor may have that day. So. Oh. And the, the intention is to like uh, take the youth tour the fire hall and, and do some cool things and show them some town operations and give them some tours and give them a feel for what happens within the town of Edson. So okay. depending on the day and what's what's mm -hmm. happening that day. So. Oh, yeah, that was all I had. Yeah, thanks. Any other questions? All right. We're moving on to a closed meeting session. May I have a motion that council move into a closed session to discuss the proposed coat of arms in accordance with section 16.1a and 25.1 of the FOIP Act. Councillor Baer makes that motion. All in favor? We are now in a closed Very good. All right, may I have a motion for adjournment? Councillor Chouinard. Non-debatable, all in favor? Passed, thank you very much.